Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. Come with me real quick. This is what we're dealing with. Come in here and talk to you, just because it's absolutely holding a gill. You can see there, we've got a very strong easterly. For people who've watched our videos before, when I've said we can't really fish in an easterly, this is why. It stirs up the clarity, causes a terrible swell, and it's blowing a gale. What I'm going to try and do, is I'm going to do a different type of session. I'm going to show you that even when, it, even when the weather is like this, we can still try and find some fish. Let's go. Right, I'll talk to you inside the van because it's absolutely howling out there. All I've got is I've got a couple of three little bits of pieces in my, in my little bucket. I've got some fluoro, I've got a little pot of, I call it like mini Aladdin's cave pot. It's just got a little bit of everything. It's just got swivels, beads, hooks, the lot. And the hooks I'm going to be working with today, when I can find them in my little pot, look, I've just got an assortment of little leads. Everything from being like an ounce all the way down to being... I've also got like some little lead head, lead jig heads. The hooks that I'm using are small. I use these quite a lot for mullet. I find a chino gives a good gape, they're strong and they hold a nice bait. So size eight. And all I'm gonna do is I'm knocking them up into two different types of rigs. One of them is a one up, one down. Now look, you can see you've got one that's a standoff and one that's below. And the other one is just a simple one hook paternoster. I will show you really quickly how to make one. You just pull a stretch of fluoro off that's a couple of feet long, tie a double hand loop in it. And what I'm using is a twisted boom blood loop. Get hold of your line between your thumb and your fingers. And all you're doing is just twist it. I have a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how to tie this knot. How to make this rig actually. You will struggle if you have fat fingers like me. But it just takes a little tiny bit of practice. You go. You have a standoff boom. And by passing oh oh no <sighs> Got it <laughs> Just like that. Magic. All you do is you take your loop, pass it through the eye. I use this so I can change the size of the hook if I want to. This is a great type of rig if you're going to be changing up what you're doing. Because you're only looping it through, you can change the hooks really easily. And by using like a loop at the bottom, when you come to wanting to change your leads, I use this one just for exercise, all you need to do is you just pass your loop through the eye and pass your lead through the loop. So there, you're ready to fish. If you need a lighter lead, all you need to do there is you just change it off, like that. Right, I'm going to knock up half a dozen of these rigs and we'll get down there go fishing. First little market I've come to is just round the corner from where you saw me start. Well, the reason I've come down here is because we're slightly out of the way of the weather and there's some nice little gullies. I'll walk you over there now. The wind noise might get a little loud. But yeah, the tide's just rising and what I'm looking at doing is I'm going to fish into these two gullies here behind me. You can see I can walk down, there's another gully running at the back of there, and I'm going to fish into that gully. Now it probably, it's only going to be a couple of feet down here, but that will be three or four feet deep. I'm fishing for things like corkwing wrasse, ballon wrasse, gobies, that type of thing. Just using a little scratching rigs and ragworm. There we go. Lovely little ballon ras. Take it on the top hook of my scratching rig. There's the hook. Let's go and get it back. I'll show you 
fuel again really quickly. This is just my 7 to 24 gram low rod. Well, Pen Clash 3000. The, the reel's a good reel for this, heavy reel for this. And why I can untangle it, I'll show you. It's just a very simple one up, one down rig. And all I've got on there is just like some little tiny strips of ragworm. And there's another. Even better than the last one. Cracking little ballon ras. Now I've had to put the camera up here because there's some waves about and it's just blowing a hoolie. It's already blown the camera over once. So I'm going to get this guy down here in this rock pole, get him unhooked and get him back. And I think we might move to another gully. And he's released. <laughs> Tide's coming in. Tide's coming in quite fast, so we're going to have to move. Because the tide's coming in, because I'm going to be scrambling around, I'm going to change you over to the chest mount, see how that works. I'm going to be fishing down into here and along the edge of there. Doing little cork wing rust. Let's get him up and get him back. That patch there, you see where it's dark blue, that shows that it's a breeding age, that shows it's mature. Quite a lot of small fish you will also see, they have a false eye on their tail. This is a fully grown corkwing wrasse. Stunning aren't they? Let's get it back in that rock pool. Just leave him in there to recover for a second and then when the waves come over they'll take him out. What a beauty that is! Let's try and get him released. Back he goes. What a cracking ball and rust.
That is a proper one. Oh, get out, go. Oh. Oh. I knew there was a good one in there somewhere. There he is. That is a proper size ras. Perfectly camouflaged in them rock poles, aren't they? Now what I'm going to do is I'll get a proper photo of him. Easy tiger. Calm down. That is a proper one. I knew there was a good one in there somewhere. That is a fantastic ballon ras, especially for a day like today. What a beauty. Keep him in this rock pool here, I'll get a photo of him. We're going to have to move because as the tide's getting higher, it's getting waves are getting stronger. So yeah, that was perfect timing. Let's get a photo and let's go back. Yeah, look, what I'm going to do with this guy here, I'm just going to leave him here in this rock pool. Because any minute, <laughs> like that, rather than risk releasing him, I'm going to wait for the waves to come and just take him out of the rock pool. Time to go. Yeah, the mark. Well, you can see. Getting a little bit too rough where I was. So let's make our way to the van. Make up a couple more traces because I did lose a couple. And then we'll move to the next mark. The little spot I'm going to be fishing now is just the side of a pier. Just along the side of there. Because these piers, when they get down to the bottom, they've got like holes and cracks and crannies. Rass, blennies, gobies. I've even had tompot blennies and top knots here. I'm just going to fish my little tiny scratch here. It's just little scraps of ragworm. Just bouncing along, just cover a bit of ground. We'll see what we can find. Lenny. You can sell it to Tom Pot because it has these little tiny like little tiny eyebrows on there. That's quite a nice size one. There you are. Let's go and take him over there and put him back. Same species as before, just different colorations. What you don't really see in these videos is how much time passes. 45 minutes later, <laughs> you're not having it, noisy seagulls. That is a gold cine ras. 
You might notice that quite a lot of the mini species, they have what's called a false eye on their tail. That black dot there, it's to pretend that that's where its head is. So that if a predator comes up and attacks it, it thinks that's its head. It attacks its tail and it can get away. It has got quite a lot of little black spots on it, I'm not sure if that's a parasite. But yeah, he's a little bruiser, he's been in the wars, he's covered in scars. Calm down. Let's get him back. Cine Ras number two. <laughs> this one's actually got more of a tail than the other one. Smaller but with a better tail. There we go. Let's go and get it back. Wind's starting to pick up here, so I'm gonna move a little bit further around. The next mark I've come to is another pier, but this one, if you can see, follow underneath, it's got stanchions. We're just going to be fishing in exactly the same way, just around the edges. Now it has got a little bit colder. The wind is a little bit, if it was possible, the wind's even stronger. So I'm just going to fish around with my scratching rigs, see what we can find. See? Well that didn't take long at all. We've actually got a double shot. There's another species. That is two black gobies. dorsal fin. It's blowing a gale now, it's absolutely howling. They do have a really pretty dorsal. Let's see if I can get him to stick it up. He's not doing it. A big mouth on him. So yeah, you can see the colour difference there. These are both black gobies. Sometimes get them in the really dark. I'm imagining that he's gonna be like a big male. And this is either going to be a little female, possibly. Let's go and get them back. Whoa, well, I've made it back to the van now. It was blowing a gale and it started to get pretty cold. Um, yeah, I did alright over that. I think I got five species. I landed about maybe, maybe 18, 20 fish. Just goes to show, even when it's absolutely blowing a hoolie, if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> I hope you found this interesting. All the very best. See you later. The hooks, when I can find them, I don't know where I put them. Why can't I find them? Where have they gone? What have I done with them? There they are. Right. Tell you what, I'm going to start all that again. <laughs>